This is another original song. It's kind of sad. We all grew up in restaurants. <laughs> Exhibition My Playground by Sako. Alright, stay tuned. Well, we'll sort of scan over this installation mural here in the front gallery. Okay, so this is one of the larger pieces in the show. It's titled Blink and You'll See 2023 Acrylic Oil Pastel and Oil Sticks on Linen. I'll read a little bit from the press release. I was talking to the gallerist and he said Doe is a, like the main character or the kind of generic figure that's in here. Doe is a character from the universe created by Si Han Jang, better known as Sako. Through vibrant textures, his work comes to life. Always working in three dimensions, even his paintings feel like sculpture. In a studio that resembles the laboratory of a mad scientist, Sako experiments with mixing media, blending concrete with acrylic, rendering with everything from oil stick to airbrush. He uses his tools for a purpose, to create a living world of his, for his characters which can appeal to everyone. It says, you won't regret it. 2023, acrylic and oil pastel and oil sticks on linen. Well, I uh, mentioned that I'd come in and seen the show yesterday and, uh, well, I was kind of out making a run just to see what was happening in the in the gallery so I didn't stop and do any recording but as I said I kept thinking about this show and uh, one of the things that struck me is that uh, I think this whole tendency of the uh, artists that are doing work that uh, kind of recalls childhood and those kinds of things has become, well, a predominant movement or a force in the art market. And uh, I'm not going to have time to give you the titles of all these little pieces. This is just another Saturday, 2023 acrylic and oil pastel oil sticks. It's 11 by 14, 14 by 11. I guess those are all basically the same size. Rocking Horse 2023. Okay. Actually, I kind of uh, enjoyed this sculpture. This is titled, We All Need a Hug, Resin and Crystal PVC, but I liked uh, what happens with the, the lensing of these eyes.
This is titled Early Bird. I like an oil pastels, blah, 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 on linen. 36 by 48. Okay, so uh, Sako is a pretty, uh, can be articulate. Uh, and his rendering of the eyes is pretty intense. Also, all of these characters have got this kind of uh, heads of uh, thick knife on. It says it's acrylic, it could be modeling paste, I don't know. And then that's uh, spray painted. little installation here in the back room. This is untitled Sunny 2023 Wood. This is five by four and a half by three and a half feet. Well, as I was saying, I came in, I saw the show. I was pondering it for uh, the last 24 hours and uh, thinking about the well the tendency of a lot of artists to kind of be producing these images that uh, recall childhood and uh, the early innocence of life and uh, well I wrote a piece I believe it's got to be about almost 20 years ago now at this point about something I called retreat to the nursery and I took a uh, critical stance against this kind of work. Uh, and I would say that people like Keith Haring and Kenny Scharf and uh, even Jeff Koons with some of his inflatable toy pieces have been dealing in this realm. And uh, well, I guess it was my contention and I, this is probably partially because I'm coming out of the kind of the second generation beatnik uh, hipster existentialist end of things. This is my playground 2023, 48 by 72. Anyway, so I'm coming out of a more existentialist view of things which uh, kind of makes you say or makes you think that uh, one of the goals of life is to come to some kind of knowledge and understanding of what's holding the world together and uh, as long as you're a child you really uh, can't grasp that because you're always dependent on other people to do your thinking and your decision-making and uh, provides you with what you need including your aesthetics and uh, morals and those kinds of things so uh, anyway I was kind of rallying against that kind of work and also I think uh, you know not only am I an existentialist but I'm sort of dealing with the uh, the whole artistic school of the the New York painting scene. So you've got some real, I don't know, maybe it's macho, whatever guys, you know, the Pollocks, the Koonings, Rothko's, Kleins, and even the Warhols and all those people are a little, a little tougher, a little scarier. You know, they're looking at, looking into the void, I guess is, Nietzsche would say. Uh, this is One More Chance 2023. So I've got a suite of pieces. They're all the same size. This is number four. Okay, so we've got our sports themes. I guess that's the Giants. I don't know who that is. The Lakers. They're all color keyed. We've got somebody with a uh, Yankees helmet on. This is, I got this, 2023, 36 by 48. 
This is titled Real Ones 2023. Okay, so this one's all keyed to the green. I'm noticing also that uh, Sako kind of uh, varies the kinds of brush strokes that he's building up the hair spaces with a little bit. Okay, so this has been James Com reporting on Sako, my playground, here at Long Story Short. Okay, viewers, so we're gonna run in here to Freight and Volume and take a look at a David Baskin show titled Storebot. Well, we'll come in and make a sweep. Probably should read a little bit from the press release. For Starbot, David Baskin purchased generic sculptures produced and sold by the big box store Home Depot, and he made molds directly from the retail art, then cast up to 40 multiples in polyurethane resin. The newly cast sculptures, pigmented in vibrant pop colors, will be displayed alongside enlargements of each sculpture design Referencing retail strategies and illicit consumer desire. Well, I was uh, thinking that this was kind of fun just from a sculptural standpoint. And then when I came in and read his uh, theory about borrowing retail sculpture and recasting, and I thought, gee, this is like... Uh, Postmodern meta theories of aesthetics. Let's see if we can get some. Okay, so as you see, I think there's basically there's four designs. This one is titled Prop, and I guess then it's just the colors. Okay. That is titled Prop, okay, so a lot of them are similar titles. Uh, so they talk about how this is just generic sculpture. I think the interesting part about that is that uh, even a place like Home Depot or Ikea or someplace, they had to start out with some kind of uh, idea, some kind of reference that they wanted to use, and so I guess the ch what does this say about uh, contemporary modern sculpture? Uh, there were a couple of, looks like cast paper. Okay, these are embossed handmade paper. This is logo series number three. And again, I guess you probably just could have taken one of the sculptures, chopped off the base, and pressed it into the, the wet paper, made a mold. It doesn't have sizes on there, but I would estimate that it's probably about 32 by 24, something like that. We'll look at some more of the 
the cast pieces. So I've known David for a while, and I think maybe the first show of his work that I covered, he was doing a similar cast, but he had gone down to the grocery store and found bottles, like bottles of lotion and other various things that had very sculptural forms. And then uh, he cast those and put them in a display and there were like dozens, maybe hundreds of those. And uh, well, it was interesting to see what happened when you took the labels off the bottles and just presented them as sculpture. And I think in a certain way, you know, David's a very clever, <laughs> tricky guy. This is a certain kind of a thing, but instead of working with some kind of practical utilitarian object, he's gone up to where people are now selling art in the big box stores. Okay, so we've got three of these large pieces here. And I think one of the things that David also is aware of is the, the idea of presentation. And this goes back to his work that he was doing with the, uh, the cast bottles. They were also kind of presented in the, the window of the gallery almost as if they were products. But uh, I think this is all pretty theoretically interesting stuff, especially when we're in a market-driven consumer economy. And uh, it's like everything we buy has got some kind of uh, message and brand name involved with it. This is serendipitous. I like the your, artist, your David Baskin. Just, thing on your, uh... <laughs> that's my dead cat. <laughs> okay. We were talking about the Schroeder, Schrodinger experiment and the dead cats. Anyway, tell us a little bit about the new show. I was kind of walking around yapping about it, but I thought that the uh, kind of the uh, meta postmodern yeah. the theoretical uh, aesthetics of this was interesting. Tell us a little about, bit about that. Well, these, these forms, I actually, um, believe it or not, at Home Depot, Right. Um, I read the press release. Yes, you read it. Good. Not many people do. So, so I, bought, I purchased um, sculpture online uh, through Home Depot, and there were four principal designs. Right. You could see them in I these saw here. Them. Yes. So then I, what I did was I, um, the originals were these uh, very cheap, cheaply made, uh, outsourced, I think in India. Um, and a, a kind of this aluminum material, kind of this cheap metal material, and I made molds, and I went to production myself. So I, I, and you were all, competing with Home Depot now. Well, the idea was, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like here's a corporation making um, sculpture, and I was conscious of also the um, kind of the class thing that was involved. Cause yes, was, no, was that's interesting. These, yeah, and there's all that aspirational stuff and these kind of cultural codes. What you know, I and, like and, it. And, cultural and, codes. And, yes, there you go. In, in any product, or but but particularly a work of art that's sold through a corporation, and you know, it's there's an aspirational thing. So it represents yes. kind of a high art, but it wasn't really about this the rarefied, unique um, sculpture itself. So that's why. It's, it's done in, numbers are important. That's why I went into production and made all these multiples. Um, I think the other interesting thing now, do they make any reference to the, who the actual artist the no, design that, is? That's, that's and so thing. that's kind of bringing it back from right. so the an anonymous artist back into being right. so, a real piece by yeah. a real human right. artist. So that's the whole thing, it's devoid of any authorship. It's an unknown, yeah, you okay. know. But they have these real modernist tropes to them that I was yes. kind of intrigued by, or these like Googie architecture signage, or some, you know, Jetsons The Jetsons, type that's of, what yeah, I was going to say, the, the nuclear which, design style. Which for me brought back kind of this modernist utopian idea of art for the masses. So here's this, you know, corporation, again, making art very accessible. And there's a real kind of democratic aspect to it, right? So anyone yes. could really buy art, but it's generic art. And that whole concept of generic art is pretty interesting as well, you know, because it, it lacks authorship. 
Um, <clears throat> it, it references so many kind of tropes or there's something very familiar about it, right? You know, everyone can kind of identify um, um, with the form or, you know, what it's... Right, we've seen this in cartoons represents. for years. <laughs> yeah, in fact... For Jetsons. In fact, if, if like the New Yorker did some sort of cartoon of a work of art, it'd probably be one of these, That's right? exactly right. So it's, it becomes sort of a symbol of art or a symbol of sculpture. You know, right, a symbol of modern sculpture, a modern certain sculpture. period, like 1950s modern right. sculpture. And, and for me also, it, was kind of, it, it kind of folded back to a little bit of that was a period for a particular demographic, you know, when the working class um, was pretty strong. There right, was, and starting to get class. involved in culture more on a different right. level. Right, so, you know, now here's a corporation that is, um, you know, outs Cashing outsourced in on this and everything. Looking, yeah. Right, outsourced all the uh, work of arts. Um, so, you know, they're just kind of rich with a lot of different things. So, and it says that some of these you cast in editions of up to 40? Well, there were 40 total. Here, there's about 32 or 36. Okay. Um, and they're all unique um, editions because each form doesn't uh, replicate itself in the same color. Right. So, okay. although the forms, That's interesting. I think up here, there's about eight each that all were right. selected. Okay. And uh, again, so we, they're, I guess, basically unique editions. That's how those. You're really uh, <laughs> cutting into their thing with the, giving them an author and making them unique, and you're sort of going well, against the whole, this the whole code. Right, it's kind of the ready-made thing, you know, so, you know, yes. it's like it's the commodity coming out of the retail space, becomes a work of art, this is a work of art as a commodity already, because I purchased it, and so kind of recontextualizing it. And the large ones here, I was thinking in terms of props or, you know, yes. thinking of retail display. So I wanted to reference the source or kind of contextualize it in, in, from every aspect of the material. Casting in plastic is, is you know, signifies um, cheap consumer mass production. You know, right? Well, I it, said it that I saw a, you had a show that you did about 10 or 12 years ago where you cast a bunch of bottles, commercial yeah, bottles yeah, and things. Yeah, they kind of reference that. Those were Dove bottles. And, and then these, these spinning yeah. ones reference uh, kind of retail displays. Uh, so these are kind of props. But these are not cast. These are all no, hand... No, these are enlarged. So what these I did are was like I enlarged... I enlarged um, actually all four of the original patterns. Ah, okay. So, all right. And then, all right, David Baskin. Well, thank you. Store bought. Store bought. Brought to you by the Baskin Corporation here. Exactly. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. I'm not, you know, not public yet, so you can <laughs> buy your shares. But okay. who knows? Maybe that's the next project. All right. Thanks so much for jacking with us, yeah, David. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank the show you. looks great. Thank you. A lot Appreciate of fun. It. Thank great. you. Thanks. So, this has been James Com reporting on David Baskin's Store Bought. Heard great volume. You can like this, share, link it up to all your social media sites, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. I used to ask you to say, thank you, Kate. Thank you, guys. We are chat fun. That's enough for today. Chat fun. Follow us on All IG. Right, thank you. Follow us at Grunga. We're trying to raise money for our first song on Spotify. Yeah. Soon.